Welcome to the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time at St. Francis of Assisi Parish here in Kitchener. We begin by singing the Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy in the indigenous language of Cree. Te pene kichi ke on kiki maka nichi ke Christos kiki maka nichi ke Te pene kichi ke on kiki maka nichi ke May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and he said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate their father and mother, spouse and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even their life itself, cannot be my disciple. Does not, whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow, be- fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000? If he cannot, then, while the others are still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore, whoever of you does not give up all their possessions cannot be my disciple. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever we stand before the death of one who is beloved to our hearts, we stand in a place of deep sadness, sorrow, and pain. One might describe the grief that we enter into as the rebellion of our minds, hearts, souls, spirits, and bodies to the demand of letting go of the one that we have loved. We must let go of the living and the loving relationship that we share. We must let go of the joy, love, happiness, longing, hopes, dreams, and places of journey yet to be lived. Often the journey to the place of peace involves walking through times of anger and depression. It's hard to let go. It's awful to let go. In my limited experience with people who are dying, no matter if their faith is great or small, they find it difficult to let go of life, to let go of being healthy, to let go of the relationships they know they will be leaving. In today's Gospel, Jesus calls us to a radical letting go of all that would prevent us from living in total fidelity to him. Discipleship means 
the detaching and letting go of anything that prevents us from living the wisdom of God, the call and the teachings of Jesus, and the will and the direction of the Holy Spirit. This could mean the letting go of our silver and gold or other possessions. It could also mean the letting go of relationships, habits, addictions, our power or prestige, our patterns of comfortable living. So total and so radical is this call to detach from and let go of all that prevents us from living out of a place where Jesus is the center and key priority of our lives. It could mean letting go of family, friends, or relatives who prevent us from living our baptismal covenant. Our gospel pulls no punches in its demands to let go of all that possesses us, stifles us, or hinders us from being fully human and fully alive in Jesus Christ. Our gospel is clear that to be a disciple of Jesus in today's world demands total commitment and not just a well-intentioned contribution to Christ in a comfortable Christian life. Discipleship costs, and grace is not cheap. There's no such thing as a comfortable pew. Discipleship demands the carrying of our own cross and the crosses of others. It should not surprise us that the demands of Jesus in the gospel today awaken a rebelliousness within our hearts to the letting go of that which the gospel demands. It should not surprise us that letting go creates a sense of deep grief, similar to that which we experience in the face of the death of someone we love. Builders of towers and wagers of war have calculated the cost. Have we really calculated the cost of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus? The German Lutheran martyr Dietrich Bonhoeffer, in his book entitled The Cost of Discipleship, shared freely and humbly his struggle to meet the costly demands of discipleship. Bonhoeffer speaks of being disturbed by his own self-seeking careerism at university and how easily he could have slipped into a soft Christianity with a comfortable church. A question kept gnawing at him and intruding in his budding success story. What was he as a Christian to do about the impossible demands of discipleship? His answer was enunciated in a simple but unflinching obedience. Bonhoeffer accepted without regret to live as a human, a Christian, a disciple of even though it cost him everything. In a letter to his agnostic brother, Bonhoeffer alluded to the cost. He said, There are things for which an uncompromising stand is worthwhile. And it seems to me that peace and social justice in Christ are such things. Bonhoeffer's uncompromising stand for Christ cost him everything. He died by hanging at Floisberg Nazi concentration camp, Nazi concentration camp in April of 1945. What has our stand for Christ? cost us. In order to live discipleship, we need to have the wisdom of Solomon, the fire of the Spirit, and the courage and conviction of St. Paul. Do we recognize Onesimus as our brother in Jesus, 
Do we hold the poor, the weak, and the vulnerable of our world close to our hearts? Do we allow the poor to lead us into the heart of Jesus, the heart of the gospel, and the heart of the church? How do we embrace our scriptures today? Do we see the risen Jesus as the basis of our behavior, the ground of our actions, and the source of our hopes? Do we see ourselves entering into a place of desire to respond to what Jesus is asking of us? The journey to let go is long, hard, and arduous. The likelihood is that most of us will not have to give up everything like Dietrich Bonhoeffer in order to be a disciple of Jesus. The problem is that most of us do not want to give up anything. Praise be Jesus risen. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.